okay now let us talk about the one fundamental process of cellular uh, mm, cellular what you can say work is the replication dna replication we have the fundamental process of central dogma we have talked about central dogma so far so what is central dogma of biology in this case let's talk about that central dogma of biology suggests us that to to carry on uh, the work of a cell to to carry on uh, the, all those coordination between a cell and cellular organelle we must produce proteins because the most of the part of the cell is made up of protein and whatever we are looking at in unicellular or multicellular organisms like us uh, most of us are making uh, are are made by those proteins so to pro produce proteins we need information to produce it so the information is highly packed in this dna molecules which we call is the big boss of all cellular respiration or cellular processes okay so in this case to produce that protein we need this information from those dnas how can we go into proteins from a dna that is called the central dogma of biology for example we have this dna and we produce rna from this dna rna is a messenger is a secondary messenger which carries all those information from dna and that finally makes what you call the proteins so we finally have those proteins which actually the which actually builds body or what we know as life is made by this protein so which makes body so this is an overall action scheme so this is not a linear scheme as we know because we can make dna to rna and we can also make rna to dna in in some viruses so using another set of different proteins different enzymes so we not only produce rna from dna and uh, protein from rna but also these proteins are needed to produce rna from dna and uh, and also proteins are needed to produce proteins so proteins are actually everything uh, uh, we are looking at in a body and proteins are help uh, are helping to do different things in a body so this is called the central dogma of biology and to carry on this central dogma of biology we need to produce more and more amount of dna because we need the information why we need the information the answer is if we want to uh, share our information if we want to share information from one generation to another generation if we want to donate the information to, to our offspring to carry on the same type of proteins that they can form a life cycle or lifestyle like uh, like we we does we, we do sorry so that's why we need to produce this dna from the dna and the production of dna from dna is called this dna replication so this is where the replication comes in this is called the dna replication from dna to dna and it it also needs some proteins to do that and those proteins will be most of the time different enzymes which helps this uh, helps to do this job to do this uh, replication of dna so replication means simply the duplication of dna molecule as we know that characteristics of dna molecule it is a sorry <laughs> So it's, it's it's like like this spiral structure. If we unwind it, we can find these two different strands, and those strands are having the phosphodiester backbone in the outer side, and we have the bases inside, which forms hydrogen bonds between themselves to make a stacking interaction between them to make a structure integrated, like this twisted ladder. Okay, so we need to produce this uh, DNA. And how can we produce this DNA? Then let's talk about it. so to actually know how this dna is replicated from one to an another two copies uh, we have several different models for dna replication scheme in previous time in in the time of 19 1920 uh, and 1930s and in this time scientists are actually thinking about how dna could be replicated and then they knew different types of models and and they hypothesized different models for dna replication there are this three main or major hypotheses of dna replication one is this conservative model the the old old strand will remain the same and a new strand is formed and the old strand will facilitate the formation of new strand and in this case what we have in first generation we have the 50 50 uh, chance of production of the new strand and uh, and the old strand so what we have in the first generation remember this it's a 50 50 chance of having all those things okay so 50 50% chance of having uh, those different types of Uh, DNA molecule. So one new one, uh, one uh, old. That's why we call the 50/50. In in case of conservative scheme, so this is called the conservative model. Why? Because in in this model, uh, this previous structure, the parental DNA is remains the same, and the new DNA is formed. So it conserves its structure. So the conservative model. And next, let's talk about the semi-conservative model. What it means? It is it is it is also talk about the conservativeness of DNA, but not the whole DNA. It's about the conservativeness of one DNA strand. That's why it is called semi-conservative. 
conservative instead of that conservative so what it what it means that parental one of those parental strand act as a template for making another strand because as we know in this dna those strands are uh, tem uh, templates or uh, what you can the complementary of each other that means one a always binds with one t via two hydrogen bonds and one G binds with C via three hydrogen bonds. That's why they are called. The they are showing this complementarity. And in this case, one old strand or parental strand act as a template for producing another new strand using this complementarity and using different DNTPs or deox uh, deoxy nucleotide ribonucleotide phosphates. Okay, so we need these DNTPs which are, which actually attach together to make this DNA. So in this semi-conservative model, this is, and after this, if, if the semi-conservative model is right, then what you find in the first generation, you'll find 100% a, a new type of model. So we, we are not uh, having any parental strand, we are not having any new strand. What we are having, we are having a hybrid of strands. So it's a, it's a new set of uh, thing. We have, we have a hybrid of strands. So if it is conservative, we will 50-50. If we have, the, in this case, we have a hybrid strand. So if we can if we can separate these things, if we can separate the this old strand and a new strand via some process, we can mm, we can test our hypothesis. Okay, and that's what uh, the scientists did. In this case, the scientists are Messelsel and Stahl. They did an in incredibly very very basic but good experiment, and they they finally make a model for separating this old and new strand. And there were there is another model, and that is called the dispersive model. Uh, what this dispersive model is t telling us that the parental uh, DNA is uh, so the, the new generation, the first generation is made up of hybrid. But in these hybrids, they are not like those one strand is con conservative, another is new. Not like that. So we have splashes of new and old strands together. So we have a mixture of strands. So in this case, of dispersive. It seems a little bit of ha hazardous model, but um, scientists actually make light into these two models. So they 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 can say this any one of these two can can be a right. That's why Messenger and Stahl did the experiment. So how ca can they separate the old and new strand? They use a technique which is called density gradient centrifugation or DGC. We can say. Density gradient centrifugation. What is mean by centrifugation? Centrifugation is separating different cellular com com components uh, according to their uh, concentration or uh, density. Uh, not not concentration according to their density via the spinning. A uh, spinning is a, a, a according uh, the, the 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 you the the amount of spinning is. Actually, uh, the force uh, is uh, like those gravitational force. So in this case, they use uh, the gravitational force of one lakh, and they spin uh, those their uh, th those DNA molecules, which which they separate from each culture medium, and they use Escherichia coli for their experimental purposes. So this is a bacteria that you can find in your gut, and vi in vigorous amounts is a very good bacteria that that stays in our gut and that helps us to do many things. So this this E. coli. Uh, they extract the DNA from E. coli, and and what they do, does, they they make a mm, model to separate those old and new. So what what they did, they actually, uh, they actually f in the first or parental DNA, they they culture that DNA in in what you call the the high higher denser DNA. How can make how they can make the denser and a lighter DNA? They can make it they they can make it by culturing those E. coli in different type of nitrogenous medium. So they need nitrogen for their purposes because DNA need nitrogen because then has a nitrogenous basis. So what they did they actually uh, they actually have a medium called ammonium ammonium chloride or ammonium hydroxide this kind of medium and they uh, they uh, they attach the, they 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 grow this E. coli in those mediums where they have only nitrogen source and those nitrogens are marked with this N15. So what is N15? N15 is an isotope of normal nitrogen which is N N14. So this N15 is slightly denser than N N14. So what they did, they marked the first generation with all those N15. So all of the DNAs that in the, fir the first generation of E. coli is marked with N15. And the second generation, they what they did, they actually, they actually can take this